Hey, into picklers! Welcome to our second uh, podcast, second edition of this podcast, uh, Fizz Pickleball Therapy. That was actually Jill's idea to name it Pickleball Therapy. I think it's a really good name. What we try and do in this podcast is give you some substantive uh, information that will hopefully help you as a pickleball player. And then we offer you a little bit of a riff in terms of uh, just some interesting pickleball topic that uh, we just want to talk about for a few minutes. So uh, if you like that kind of stuff, if you like pickleball knowledge and improving your pickleball knowledge, stay tuned for the podcast. Are you repeating the same errors on court over and over again? Wouldn't it be nice if you could first recognize what was causing the repeated error and second, fix it during the game? You can acquire the skill set. You can study videos and watch your friends as they play to develop your ability to see the game. Or you can join the Into Pickle Academy and we will teach you how. If you're interested, go to intopickle.com and click on clinics or you can email Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E at intopickle.com. Become the best player you can be. Today I'm going to share with you the 80-10-10 rule, but before we get into that, I want to continue our conversation from last week about your improvement as a pickleball player. Last week's podcast, we talked a little bit about uh, improvement. We gave you some three tips to improve, different things you can do. What I want to talk about in this week's podcast is I want to focus on what what you need to do to improve, not from a sense of uh, you know tips or specific things you can do, but conceptually, what does it mean to be a, a successful pickleball player? And by successful, I don't mean it in the sense of, uh, you know, someone who I, I don't mean in the, in the in the kind of loose sense of well, I enjoy playing pickleball, so I'm successful, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to go out and just get some exercise and see some friends, socialize, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly good use of pickleball. But if you want to improve as a player, so if you want to be a successful pickleball player in that sense, in the sense of results, then the question is, what do you need to focus on, or what should you focus on in order to achieve that objective? So you know, say that. You know, right now you're playing at a 3-0, 3-5, even 4 whatever level you're playing at, right? Or you're just, you know, you're playing in a group of people and, and you feel that when you leave the courts, uh, you know, every time that maybe you're you're not one of the stronger players on the court in terms of results of that day. And so you want to uh, improve that. The question is, well, what do I do to, to go from where I'm at to where I want to be? And the, 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 the truth about it is that it's not the exciting things that will make you a better pickleball player. You don't need something like, uh, you know, I was thinking about it, like how to explain it. So, you know, you don't need to add like a double reverse topspin lob with a pike finish to be a good pickleball player. So you don't need some fancy new shot, uh, you know, some yet undiscovered uh, angle that you can uh, generate and things like that. What you need to do to become a good pickleball player is to stick to the basics. Basics are the same as fundamentals. Uh, you know, just it's, it's just the stuff that, that you need to do repeatedly and consistently well. A lot of times when you look at, uh, if you if you were to view one of your matches and watch it, which I highly recommend everybody do, it's it's one of the really only ways to see what's going on, is um, what you'll notice when you watch it later is that most of the rallies that you lost were probably the result of, of some small error that you committed, something like a misreturn of serve, not getting up to the MBZ, you know, things that are very uh, fixable very, uh, um, you know, very remediable, if you will, um, by, by players, no matter your skill level, there are things that you can do to improve those types of things and to, uh, improve your results as a pickleball player. Think back on the last few times you've been out on the court. How many of those games have you won based on some fancy shot, you know? So yeah, it's exciting when you hit an ATP or someone does an Ernie or whatever, you know, some weird serve that, that wins the, that rally. But really, how many games are won that way? How many games did you leave the court and said to yourself, you know, I really won that game because I was able to do the fancy, again, the, the double reverse topspin lob shot? Uh, probably not many, uh, you know, but you can definitely come off the court and say, OK, I, I probably could have done better that game if I had not missed a return of serve or if I had uh, made sure I got to the MBZ. If I had followed my lob in, you know, it was a good lob, I had followed it forward. If I had come forward on a nice third shot, if I had tried to neutralize the advantage of the return team when I'm on the serve team, if I had really understood, you know, the role of a serve team versus a return team and vice versa and things like that. So when you come off the court, you know, a lot of times the the end result of a, of a game is dictated not by the exciting, you know, shot that everybody goes nuts about. It's it's dictated by the boring stuff. Like, you know, who who just played a better return side, you know, who hit better returns of serve and things like that. So if you really want to improve as a pickleball player, if you, if you want to improve your results as a pickleball player, 
then what you really have to focus on is you have to focus on the fundamentals and the basics. If you listen into Pickle, you've heard me use the term red herrings before, and, and that's really just a term to describe items or things that are that are fancy or shiny that look like something I want to go after uh, and it'll improve my pickleball, which really isn't going to really help the game. You know, really not going to help the fundamentals, particularly if you're lacking in, in other areas. So let's say, for example, you're hitting, uh, you know, 100 mile an hour returns to serve, but not making it up to the MVZ line. Then that's really not a good strategy to play with. You're better off hitting, you know, 20 mile an hour returns to serve that are high and deep and getting up to the MVZ line. Whenever I'm watching rec play, you know, I'll notice uh, players who have fundamentally sound games and players who do not. And my money will always be on the fundamentally sound player to take that game or to win that game. You know, the, the player that's doing the exciting things and hitting hard balls and things like that. Sometimes they'll win, sometimes they won't. But my money is generally going to be on the player that's just playing a fundamentally sound pickleball game, hitting nice deep returns. Uh, when they're on the return side, getting up to the MBZ, locking it down, denying the other team the opportunity to come forward, letting out balls go. And then on the serve side, trying to neutralize the advantage of the return team, uh, get up to the MBZ line if you can, you know, nice, calm uh, fashion. And then once you're up there, try and bet, play the best uh, rally you can and try and win it. There's a Disney movie, and I can't remember if it's Up or one of those, but it's it's a it's a movie with a dog that uh, you know does the squirrel thing, you know that thing where the where they say squirrel and the dog just you know looks over to the forgets whatever's happening and looks over to the squirrel, and I find that that in pickleball sometimes as players will get distracted from you know from following our our path if you will to becoming a better player, which is we'll take our eye off the ball in terms of of you know forgetting about the fundamentals. And we'll go chase after something like, a, you know, hard rip serve or cool spins all over the place or things like that. You know, try, trying to add too much uh, variety to our game as opposed to really locking down the fundamentals. And once you've locked them down, then adding other fancier things to your game. Probably the best way to think about it is to think about it in terms of incremental improvement. So basically, you know, you're going to add on as as appropriate so you know until you have the basics locked down it really doesn't make sense to add another thing on top of it uh, i use the example sometimes or the the graphic sometimes of a uh, you know you're building like a really really nice house on sand so you know you take a sand foundation and then you start building this awesome structure on top of it you know the sand foundation or the sand bottom will eventually give out and the, the structure simply is not sustainable. So, you know, you're better off starting off with a really nice foundation. Kind of think of it like a like building a pyramid. You know, so you have your real wide uh, first foundation, real solid first foundation, which is just basic fundamental play. And then you add a little bit on top of that, a little bit on top of that. And eventually maybe you make it to where you're doing ATPs and, you know, again, fancier shots and spinning the ball and whatever. Uh, but if again, if you don't have that that good, solid foundation, then the rest really is not going to give you the results that you're hoping for. The moral of the story in this podcast is keep your eye on the fundamentals. You have to have an understanding of where you're at in the game in terms of your personal development. This is, you know, pickleball is a very personal sport to everybody in terms of, you know, where you're at versus where I'm at versus where, you know, John or Mary or whomever are at. And so, you know, you really want to, uh, you know, figure out kind of where you're at and what you need to be working on to improve your game. And then stick to the fundamentals. Once you've gotten that, fu that fundamental layer down and you're solid with it and you're good with it, then you can start adding on top of it and keep on building your game to get to where you want to get to. If you want to find out what the 80-10-10 rule is, stay tuned for the riff. Did you know that there's a shoe designed specifically for pickleball? Well, there is. We are proud to partner with Tyrol Shoes, the designer of shoes specifically made for pickleball. You can find them at our site, intopickle.com, Tyrol Pickleball Shoes, the shoes I wear on court. A friend of Into Pickle, Jesse Simon, uh, recently got into uh, putting out some videos. They're, they're very good videos uh, online about the on YouTube about pickleball and how to improve different drills and things like that. So I highly recommend if you come across Jesse Simon's videos or if you want to go to his channel and take a look at them. They're really good videos. And one of the, the concepts that Jesse shared, uh, I believe he shared it on his website, but it was a really good concept that I, that I took away from it that I wanted to share with you. So the 80-10-10 rule really stems from, uh, I guess it's basically human nature. You know, it's kind of a reminder to us. And you know, when, when we all started out as pickleball players, with very few exceptions, you know, unless your name is Ben Johns or Simone or Jardim or somebody like that, 
uh, you know, when, when we, most of us or all of us, when we started pickleball than those folks, um, you know, we were awful pickleball players. I mean, we, we may have been athletic. We may have been good tennis players or racquetball players or whatever. Uh, but, but we were not good pickleball players. Uh, and so, you know, it takes some time to learn the game. You know, you go out there and you, sometimes you get to play with players that, that are not at your level, players that are at your level, players that are above your level. And over time, you, uh, you kind of matriculate through the game. You, you, uh, kind of make your own path in the game and really understand, um, you know, how to, how to play better pickleball. But what ends up happening a lot of times is when players improve. So players now, you know, say when you started, you were a three or three, five, and now you're a four Oh. And so there's kind of a, uh, concept of, well, I'm not going to play with a three, five anymore. Cause now I'm a four Oh. So now I'm going to play four O's and four fives. And you know, there, there's obviously there's a logical flaw in that, in that approach, because, you know, if, if your objective is to play with, say you're a four O and you want to play with four fives, if you apply the logic that you're not going to play with three fives, then why would the four five ever play with you? So there's a logical flaw in that analysis of, well, I only play with my level or higher, uh, because if that's the case, then obviously the higher players would never play with you because they're only playing with their level or higher and you just keep on going. And it just break the whole system breaks down if you do that. And, you know, you also have to remember that the way that you were able to improve was because, you know, when you were a three, five or a three, Oh, a three, five or four, Oh, was willing to get on the court with you and play with you. So the 80, 10, 10 rule from Jesse, I think is just kind of a nice way of, of formulating it, which is the 80, 10, 10 rule is basically 80% of the time you try and play games, you know, around your level, right at your level. 10% of the time you try and play with uh, players above your level and 10% of the time you play with players who are underneath your level. So, uh, basically it's just a, it's a really good concept. Uh, you know, you can do more than that. You can do 60, 20, 20, whatever you can do, but you know, just the, the, the bottom line of it is don't forget kind of where you came from when you were playing, when you were starting pickleball and don't basically turn your back on those that are still learning or those that are coming in behind you to learn the game. Uh, because if your concept is to do that, then there's really no reason why you should expect those that are in front of you to turn, you know, turn around and be willing to play with you. So uh, 80, 10, 10 rule. Thank you, Jesse Simon for sharing that. I think it's a really good way of looking at it and uh, try and keep that in mind when you're out there playing pickleball. All right. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. If you have any ideas uh, or things that you want, like to hear us cover, uh, please uh, email us Tony at into pickle.com. Just like it sounds, uh, if you're not sure what it is, go to IN, the number two, pickle, like pickleball.com. So into pickle.com, check us out and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you guys on the courts one of these days. Stay safe out there.